Denise, and uh, I want to say good morning. Normally we say good Sunday morning. I am telling you good Monday morning. We are happy to have you with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, are we still sleepy? Are we still cold? Are we still feeling uh, as though we are dreaming? But I want to say welcome to all of you. We are happy to have you with us. And you know, in times gone by, I was able to say who would be here and who wouldn't be here. But now it has changed that I am unable to say who will be here and who won't be here. So to those online and to those with us here in the assembly, I say Merry Christmas and the best of the best for the holidays. All right. Morality is likened to a law that should be strongly adhered to by all people, regardless of race, religion, cultural background, or political affiliation. And knowing that it's Christmas morning and you are coming to hear about Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and probably Herod and the wise men and the angels, and you saying, what kind of message this man starting off with this morning? He's talking about morality. But the moment you and I hear the word and in the realm of Christianity and in the realm, the circle of the church, the moment we hear the word morality or immorality, there's a tendency for our minds to run in a certain direction and all we can think of is adultery and fornication. But when I look at Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8, it will tell you and I that there are homemongers and there are liars and there are murderers and there are those that commit abominable acts. And then there's an area that we don't hear in the church. We don't hear about this, but it's just as equally as adultery or fornication or stealing or murder. And that's the Bible says, the word of God tells us in Revelation 2, 1 and 8, that all idolaters, idolaters, we don't hear about idolatry. We hear about adultery. But idolatry is just as equally as important as adultery. Idolatry is anything that you and I place before God. We make this an idol. We begin to give prominence to this. We begin to worship this. We give our time to this. And this has taken place of the most high God. I'll tell you amen. All right? Now that's idolatry. And then we go back to the Ten Commandments and then thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt worship no other God. But ever, whatever you and I give place to before God, we make it an idol. Like I said before, I don't know who was going to be here or who wasn't going to be here. Like somebody told me, more than one person said, you throw stones, but I'm not throwing stones. I'm sorry. This is the word. And some way, some time ago, somebody confirmed this word. And I hear been a successful confirmation in some areas as well. So the question begs to differ this morning, or the statement begs to differ. Why are you making such a statement, a broad-based statement, on a day like today, on a morning like this morning? It's simple. It is simple, very mankind in its entirety, inclusive of what appears to be called the church, not the church. Listen to the words, what appears to be called the church. Because every person in a building, and there's a pulpit, and there are the instruments, and there are the leadership, and there are the people, we call it a church. But does that group lines up with the qualifications that Christ himself laid out to label the church which he said, my church. We have our church. I can call this my church. But then my church or our church need to be the church of Jesus Christ. Else we are not the church. Amen. Amen. So right away, we need to decide this morning 
whether I am part of the church or I am not a part of the church. In many assemblies, many religious gatherings, right? We label ourselves the church, but something is missing. And what is missing? What is missing? Jesus Christ have been left out of many assemblies of many of us who say we are believers. We have taken the Lord and we have put them aside. We have taken the Lord. We have put them aside. We have taken the Lord. We have put them aside and we run things. I am running things. You are running things. And then I lift my hands as the brother of the brethren say, and bless the Lord. Which Lord am I blessing? When I'm up loving the Lord. Jesus was born on a day. Not today. But he was born on a day because God loved. The scripture. God loved. And Christmas is about loving. And I'm hearing the worship leader or one of the worship leaders talk about stop hating. Stop backbiting. Stop gossiping. Stop the pulling and tugging then we should not be here this morning if that's our agenda. We're not going nowhere. We are not going anywhere, and we'll get to that in a bit. So what do we have this morning? We have a sign, no room in the inn. We looked at the innkeeper, and he shouted, there's no room in the inn. We put up the big sign, when Jesus passed by, no vacancy. I am my own boss. Recently this week, we had to do a funeral, unexpected. And I remember Sister Pulmati always this big laugh, and she would come and, how are you going, boy? And then I would hear her calling, Robbie, Robert, the husband, Robbie, Robbie. And every time they were here, they spent some time here with us. And even when Sister Catherine came back to look after the family, she would bring the mother until the point came that the mother could not come anymore. The woman I knew, with a size to see, not condemning or making a, a thing out of it, for want of a better expression, when I saw her in that box, she melted down and I wasn't aware of that. And I hear Minister Sassu talking about sickness. And thinking and talking about situations, and none of us are too strong or are too healthy when we decide to turn our back and walk away from God. I heard him this morning with a warning, and the warning is coming. I told this assembly come November, like last month. I know what's gonna happen here, but something is happening. We need there's a song we should sing in Sunday school. So I buckle up my shoes and I started. I started, I started, and I buckled up my shoe and I started, and I started my way back to God. I'm saying to us, yes, it's Christmas morning. Yes, it's the message of the manger and the birth of Jesus, but we need to buckle up the shoe, pull the lace if you don't have a buckle, and let's start 2024. It's just about six days away. We don't know what's going to happen in the six days. We don't know how many of us will be called unto the beyond. It's Christmas morning. It's a message for the church. Amen. Amen. But I don't want to talk about Herod. I don't want to talk about Joseph and Mary as we are accustomed to. We have been hearing about Mary and Joseph for many, many years. I want to go in another direction this morning. I want to look at some places. I want to look at a couple of persons. So the first place we're going to look at is Nazareth to Bethlehem. Nazareth to Bethlehem. From Nazareth to Bethlehem, it was 90 miles. Mickey was telling me, I tell him, research this, Google this. From here, the port of Spain is about 34 miles. So the distance from Nazareth to Bethlehem was like three times the distance from here to Port of Spain. Mary is in the ninth month of pregnancy. So Mary is not like Candace that she's slim and trim and she could run. Mary is carrying an additional weight. And they are traveling from Nazareth to Bethlehem. 
Why? Why does Mary and Joseph or Joseph and Mary have to leave Nazareth and go to Bethlehem? Some of us need to leave our Nazareth and go to Bethlehem. We in Nazareth too long. We dwell in Nazareth and I'm saying this when in preparation of this and meditating on the word, it's as though the spirit of God was saying to me, word and spirit assembly in Kumar Avenue is dwelling in Nazareth for too long. We need to move from Nazareth and get to Bethlehem. If we don't go to Bethlehem, the miracle will not happen. Oh. Bethlehem means house of bread. Is it significant? In John 6, 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He had to go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread. Jesus is saying, and John records, I am the bread of life. And verse 51 to 59, he says, I am the what? The living bread that came down from heaven. Around this time, a lot of bacon takes place. A lot of homemade bread and ham. And Jesus is saying to us this morning, I am the living bread. Amen. When you eat of me, you will not hunger anymore. When you drink of me, you will not thirst anymore. He's saying, come unto me, all that carrying this weight. We are carrying this burden. He says, come unto me, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. Amen. We look at the Prime Minister Rowley to give us rest. We look at the column in birth to give us rest. We look in the Republic Bank to give us rest. And Jesus is saying, I am going to give you the rest that you're looking for. Amen. 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 So let's move on. If I tell you, somebody phone is on, could you take it off, please? If I were to tell you this morning that Mary was in the wrong place, you may not want to believe me. Joseph met Mary in Nazareth. You're going to meet your Joseph. You're going to meet your Mary in Nazareth. But you can't stay in Nazareth. In order to be progressive, in order to be successful, in order to inherit, in order for the gifting to come out of us and be exposed and be utilized in the body of Christ, we need to move from Nazareth into Bethlehem. We are in Nazareth, and God is saying to many of us here this morning, we are dwelling in Nazareth too long. Let's move on. Why is it important for Joseph, especially Mary, to go into Bethlehem? Why? Because the prophetic word in Micah 5 2 says that Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. No matter what happen. Jesus had to be born in Bethlehem. I'm saying to the church this morning, to those in line, many of us, as a matter of fact, all of us would have received some prophetic word over the years at some point in time. And we are questioning why is this word that I received from such a pro profound person and such profound words and such a high level a pro prophetic gift is flowing through this person. Why is this word not coming to pass? And the word of the Lord to rest this morning. If we are in such a situation, we are staying in Nazareth when we need to go to Bethlehem this morning. Good oh, Jesus. We in Nazareth too long. We need to come out of Nazareth. We need to go. Had Joseph and Mary stayed in Nazareth, Jesus, I'm saying it this morning. Based on the word, Jesus would not have been birthed. The word of the Lord was, and is, Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. They met in Nazareth. They fell in love in Nazareth. Then, here it is. The angel of the Lord came and told Mary, you will conceive. You are going to bring forth a son. You will call his name Jesus. One of the gospels says, you will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. All that was said, but they could not stay in Nazareth. Maybe the word again, 
is to the letter. Everything is said is not happening because you need to step out of Nazareth. Step out of Nazareth. Get to Bethlehem. When they reached Bethlehem, it was not many days after Mary gave birth to Jesus. You want it to happen? You're saying it didn't happen. You're saying it's not happening. Hear this one. Caesar Augustus was 1,500 miles away from Israel. Caesar Augustus didn't know anything about Joseph and Mary. As far as Caesar Augustus is concerned, there was no person in Mary or Joseph existing. But here in the plan of God, maybe people don't know who you are, but in the plan of God, you are somebody. You are somebody important in the plan of God. Stop looking at yourself as a nobody. I'm a downcast. I'm an outcast. Nobody wants me. Wherever I go in some church, they don't need me. They don't want me. But in the plan of the most high God, you are a very important person. Mary was just about 14 years old. Bishop Kewal Singh said in his research, Joseph was an old man, probably 70 to 80 years. I don't know. He did the research and told us such. Whether it be so or not, that's not important. What's important is the carrier of the Savior. The carrier of the Savior was that 50 years. And some of us, we are saying our children is too young to be baptized. Our children is too young to get in the baptism class. Our children is too young to speak in tongues. I am telling you this morning, six-year-old in Africa is raising the dead. We raise in all kinds of things except what we need to raise, the Jesus in us. The same way the Spirit of God placed the seed of Jesus in the womb of Mary, it's the same way the same Holy Spirit is placing the seed Jesus in your life and in my life. But in many of us, we have aborted Jesus. We talk about the woman and abortion is wrong. But as believers, we are involved in abortion because we are aborting the baby in us, which is Jesus Christ. On the job, up the job, wherever we operate, like we don't know nothing about Jesus. But in the church, we can't sing like you. All they can't sing like me. All they can't pray like me. All they can't praise. But when I'm the crowd, I join the crowd. I sing in tiny whiny. I ain't singing no promises. You get it? And especially if they don't have the Coke or they have the Coke with the white bottle on the side. We begin to sing all kind of chutney. And we become like the snake. We begin to wiggle and waggle. So the seed that was, where is the seed that was planted in your eye by the Spirit of God? Where is that seed? Where is the baby? Jenna didn't remain a baby. Nobody didn't remain a baby. Alexander didn't remain a baby. You and I didn't remain a baby. We grow. So the seed Jesus Christ and you and I needs to grow. How people knew Mary was pregnant, how we know a woman is pregnant, the seed begins to grow and it begins to show. And the birth of Jesus and you and I needs to grow and needs to show. Hello? I hear the brother. What the song says, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. We love with the cutlass in the back. We love with the gun in the waist. We in church and we carry more weapons than the criminals outside here. Because we involve in so many things that we wonder sometimes whether we are a believer, whether we carry the seed Jesus or we are not. I began meditating on this word. That timing the timing every 14 years they would issue a decree that the people should be taxed and the word is registered 
And here was David, Daniel, um, Joseph, from the line of David. He had to go to Bethlehem to register. Look at that timing. There's a time. The word released to you, there is a time. But if we don't stay under the covering, the time will not matter. Don't sit back because the prophetic word is released and expect it to happen like that. We need to find ourselves in the grace that is given to us and function in the grace. And as we function in the grace, the word is going to be reached and fulfilled. Had Mary stayed in Nazareth, give it some thought. If you know the God that I am talking about, his words say Jesus is to be born in Bethlehem. The census took place around the same time that Mary was in her ninth month. I, I, I can't, I try to fathom this God, the timing of this God, how he works in a timing. Everything is that timing. Mary and Joseph traveling 90 miles from Nazareth into Bethlehem. And the four days journey would bring Mary to the place where she, the Bible says she was about to be delivered. The timing. The timing. Had they stayed in Nazareth, what was really going to happen? What was God Almighty going to do? Shake up the whole plan? Restructure the whole plan? His word is already released. His word must come to pass. So regardless of whether Caesar Augustus knew about Joseph and Mary, he issued a decree and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem. What about you and I? Are we in the wrong place this morning? That's why the word is not being fulfilled in our lives, ministry-wise. And if word and spirit assembly, we are in the wrong place that the word spoken over this assembly is not being fulfilled, then each one of us as members of this assembly, we are in the wrong place as well. Because it takes each one of us to make up this gathering, to make up this body, to make up this fellowship. So then when we look at it from that angle, all of us are in a really terrible state. Oh, don't say amen. We are... Are you where you're supposed to be? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are we collectively functioning? What about are you in the wrong place in ministry? Are we in the wrong place in relationships? Some of us, God has been speaking to us about relationships that we involve in. Mm. If you don't like this, I can't help you. I really can't help you. Because this is not my word. Like I said, I didn't know who was going to be here or who wouldn't. Relationships can either help us to go higher or go lower. Relationships can cause us and the giftings to come out and be used and utilized by God to the whole body to benefit the body. Or we can keep it here and clogged up. You know, here people die from heart attack, a clogged artery. So if you and I are experiencing as a body, wood and truth assembly, a clogged artery, we are dying. If you study HSB, you do HSB, you'll read about the amoeba. It divides itself and multiplies. And the time has come for us to divide and multiply. We cannot stay like this. We need to grow. And the growth is not just a few people. It's not just a pastor or pastors or leadership. Every one of us needs to come to that place to grow. To grow. It must be it. That's why we have a body. If it was a one-man team, then one person. No, but it's not one man. What about our, where we are with God? Our relationship with God. Are we in the wrong place? Where are we? What about our position or our office in the ministry, in the assembly? Are we in the right place where God wants us to function? God wants me to function here, but I say, no, I want to function here. Or I want to function here. Or I want to... Are you getting the word this morning? It's where God wants me to function. It's where God wants you to function. 
God has been speaking to people here, I realize, when other ministers come in and they are telling the people here the same thing I've been saying. So then if you want me to bring people from the outside so you can move from where you are to excel in your giftings, I'll do that. But you see, if you know me, you don't realize what I'm doing. I'm doing everything possible so not one of you can stand before him on that day and say he didn't tell us. I'm bringing the people. I'm exposing you. I am getting the people to teach your word. What about our conduct? Are we in the right place of our conduct? Our behavioral patterns and practices. What about our attitudes? Boy, I have seen some people in ministry with some attitudes. Tell me why, sister. The attitude, permit me this morning. Let me use it. The attitude stinks. And then when they come here, you want me to sit down and listen to you. When they speak to you, you want me to tell you, follow this person. You want to tell me, look at this on YouTube. And your attitude really messed up. Then it tells me, it leaves me, we all have attitudes, but some is way beyond. Some of us, our attitudes are like that of the man that is not born again. So what's the difference between me and that man? We all make mistakes. I tell you 99% of the time, I make mistakes. But there's some attitude and I can sense, I feel it. Hear me this morning. I feel it. When you speak to me, I feel the negative spirit behind that. So that cannot be a spirit from God. It cannot be. We want to excel. We want worship. We have heard so many times those in worship say, we want the worship to excel. We want healings and miracles and deliverances to take place. Yes, we want that. But not only the worship team or the worship leader or the musician, all of us need to get together. There's a unity in the body that is required in word and spirit assembly. Not one person alone clean the church. Not one person alone doing this. Not, we need to come together. Yes, it's Christmas morning. It's a Christmas morning message. And the word to us, are we in Nazareth or are we going to Bethlehem? You want to stay in Nazareth? That's your choice. If you know me, I'm not going to force you to stay in Nazareth or to go to Bethlehem. I will do what I have to do. I will encourage you, but you make your choice. What about mentally? As believers, you know our mind is renewed. Oh, I heard you many times before. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul says in Ephesians 4, 23, I believe, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. But when we, stand, when we stand here, we in the renewed mind. And when I get down there, I reverse that. Is that possible? Don't believe or feel for a moment that I will be tempted. I am more tempted than all of you here. In all areas. The devil don't respect nobody. <laughs> you could wear about 40 at this one time. That, that meant... Him, he target you and target me, and he's coming at you and I. He's coming at you. And what about spiritually? Where are we? Are we in the wrong place spiritually? I have come to this place that there are people in churches, and I'm hearing that many men, big televangelists, have found themselves in witchcraft. It's coming out. It's coming out in the open, and it's nothing to be um, glorified about. Because it's going to affect the church. And you and I are part of the church. So we are going to hang our head. You see when you and I do something like Achan. It don't affect me alone. It affects Achan's whole family. And when we do something like them. Like Michael. You normally say they use the H word. Who the H? You know what I'm talking about. Is he? Right? That is okay. You can say what you want about me. But I'll keep doing to the best that I can. Even if I don't make it, you have to make it. It's a wrong statement. But it's the passion with which I do what I do. I want you to utilize the gifts. Every person has a gift. Don't let's not come and sit down as though we are crippled. We have gift tents. We have ministry in us. The seed is in you and I. And we need the seed to begin to grow. 
If you don't leave Nazareth, you will die in Nazareth. We need to move out. The miracle would have only taken place once Mary and Joseph reached Bethlehem. Jesus was not supposed to be born in Nazareth. Your giftings and your calling and your operations is not for Nazareth people. It's your need to come out of Nazareth to go to Bethlehem. And the miracle is going to take place. The barrier is going to be broken. The walls are going to be shattered. The Jericho walls will come down. The Red Sea will open. The Jordan will part its waters. We will go over into the promised land. But we need to leave Nazareth. Come sister, come, come quick, come quick. Come. But I hold on to me Nazareth. And you can say where you want. Minister Sassari can tell me where you want. I am letting go of Nazareth. That you, you can preach what you want. You can bring who you want. You can bring Pastor Jeffrey and Apostle Paul. And you can bring who you want. A whole lot of Nazareth. Die all you. Well, stay in your Nazareth. You'll die in your Nazareth. Stay. What about emotionally? You know, some of us in the church, we like Jack Spanier. As we touch you, you play up. I ain't going back to church. That's your business. Go ahead, stay. If you will go to that place, not me. Because my job, my responsibility is to ensure that you come out from where you are and function in the body. If you choose to stay where you are and die where you are and not function in the body, you will answer to him, not me. Not me. I am doing my best with all the shortcomings and this and that or whatever to ensure that this body is exposed to the word and they know that they have giftings and callings and so on to move out, come out. Come out from where you are. Come out. We grew up playing hide and seek, come out. Don't let nobody look for you. When the Lord looks for you, he catch you. That's a different story. I tell people I'd rather the Lord beat me than, than you beat me than the Lord beat me. When you hear the Lord begins to deal with you as an individual, it's a real sad story. Don't wait. Don't wait like Jonah to go down in the fish belly. Don't. Please don't. Come out of Nineveh, people. Go to Nineveh. Come out from where you are. I don't know what the Lord is saying to us this morning. And I say, Lord, what kind of word you give me? We have a sign, no vacancy. Jesus, you don't tell me what to do. This is 2023. This is TNT. I must get into the sofa. And I must get into the chutney. And I must get into everything. Except in the kingdom of God. Go ahead. You go right ahead. You go right there. You are free, brothers and sisters. You are free. What about financially? Some of us are struck financially. I'll tell us something about this God. When they hear the most side ready to bless you, it a no obia man. It a no sea man. Whether in TNT, whether in Guyana, or whether in Haiti, go stop your blessing. I tell you that this morning. I declare that to you. Because when you hear most high Yahweh open the door, Richard, nobody. I say nobody. I say no devil, no demon, no neighbor, no obia man, no obia woman could stop you because Yahweh opened the door. And when he opened the door, he's going to shower blessings. You will wonder, hey, what's happening here? God is at work. God is at work. Those of you who want the house complete, it will complete, but come out in Nazareth. Those of us who want the house start, come out in Nazareth. You want the car, you want the promotion, come out of Nazareth. I don't know, I hear this word. You're looking for a husband, come out of Nazareth. Marriage to be, come out of Nazareth. The word is plain. The word is plain, very plain for all of us. What about on, on our understanding? Some of us do have no understanding. None. We don't understand the word, but God promised to give us that spirit of understanding, a spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He promised that. But if I stay in Nazareth, how am I going to get it? 
how I'll get it. Let me look at the innkeeper quickly. If in the wrong place, right, we will never give birth to what gods have deposited in us. I say very calm. If we stay where we are, we come into the close of another year. We are coming to that era where it is closer to the coming of the master for the church. Some is teaching there is no rapture. Whether there is or there is not, you and I need to be prepared. We are not going to be prepared at all times. Nobody can live perfect at any time. Somebody, especially in marriage, somebody could say something, one partner said something, and we trip. And I ask myself if Jesus should come at that time, but the grace, hear me, it doesn't, it's not a license for to live that way, but it's the grace of God that will take us through. It takes us through. The innkeeper, through all the years that went by, the innkeeper would have one person coming or two persons. It's not like now we have BMW and we have Aqua and we have B15 and Note and all the big time vehicles. It was donkey then. And you know where's a donkey? And some of us in the church, we have take each other for donkeys. I want to use the A word. I laugh at some of you when you come to your garbage, you know. I just laugh. You see, I, I don't tell people that God give me this gift and give me that gift and give me the other. But God won't put me here and put people there for I to look over and they give me what is required. If you're a carpenter, you need the tools. If you're a mason, you need the tools. If you're a welder, you have to, you have a, you have a plumber in the back there, you need the tools. I see with some tools. Where you get that, boy? I read my hacks on here with a big blade. Said, what? One chop. The right tools to do the job. And I'm saying to everyone present, whether you're part of this ministry or not, whether you're a supporter of this ministry or not, Every one of us have been placed here for a purpose. But if we stay in Nazareth, we will die, people. I'm telling you. I'm telling you from deep down on the inside. In order for us, this has nothing to do with any prophet speaking to us. This has nothing to do with any apostle speaking to us. This has nothing to do with any pastor or missionary or evangelist with respect to all the ministerial gifts and the persons functions in there. This have to do with the individual. It's an individual thing. I have to decide if I want to stay where I am or to go leave Nazareth and go to Bethlehem because it's only when I reach into Bethlehem, then the prophetic word will unveil and will be fulfilled. If Mary stayed in Nazareth, what was going to happen with the birth of Jesus? But God had it planned that he put in the mind of Caesar Augustus that they had to be taxed. That emperor didn't know about them. But the law was set out in motion by man. God, he reigns. We are going to study Daniel. The theme of Daniel is the sovereignty of God in the affairs of mankind in all ages. It tells you God control our lives. Our every move. Some of us, if you, I was thinking, if you had told me some years ago, there would be ministry under my house, I would have tell you your lie down to the last. It was impossible in my eyes, but then God. So the innkeeper, he was so busy with the crowd. He didn't see so many people before. He didn't make, he wasn't making this amount of money. So here's somebody, I want a room, I want a room, I want a room, and the in innkeeper like this. Uh, what do you want? What do you want? All right, let me go and see. Let me check. You have a room here. Let me see about are you getting me this morning? He was very busy. So here comes Joseph with Mary, this young woman, pregnant. That trouble for him. Where am I going to, how is that call him? A granny? A midwife? Where am I going to find a midwife? She looking like any time. So, no. There is no room. There is no room. And we are looking at the situation with Jesus. And Jesus is passing by us, and he's saying, I want to come in. And we are saying, no room, no room, no room. I want to do my own thing. Maybe when I get a little older, 
when I start to get bald or more bald, when my hair start to get more gray, when, you, you know, when I start to walk with a stick, when I'm about to die, then I will give my life to Jesus. And Jesus saved you and I from tender age so we could fit into the body and work the works of the most high God. The innkeeper was well busy. But had the innkeeper known what Mary was carrying? Who Mary was carrying? Not even I or no prophet know what any one of you carry in here. God knows. God Almighty knows what he put inside of you. He knows what you're carrying. You see, the Holy Spirit knew what Mary was carrying and who Mary was carrying. The innkeeper didn't know. Had the innkeeper know, that's the Messiah in the womb of this young woman. That's the Redeemer. That's the Savior of the world. He would have thrown out everybody from the inn and said, come, I'll give you all the rooms that you need. He didn't know. Or maybe this morning, beloved, you're in such a position that we don't know. Come to me. I've been telling you, you want to work in the ministry, come to me. Let me know. I will know everything. I will never know everything. But the Father knows. And if you have a desire to work in the ministry and to build not my culture, but the kingdom of God, come to us and let us know where you can help us and help building the kingdom of God. <laughs> let me put it this way. In view of all the historical all the archaeological and biblical facts of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of God, Word of God, Lamb of God, Savior, Redeemer, soon coming King, he's still knocking. He's still knocking. Is there room in the inn? Is there room? He's knocking at hearts this morning. He's asking, is there room in the inn? And we say, no, no room in the end. Be gone. That's what we're telling Jesus. This gospel is real. Maybe you're not aware of that. Maybe you grew up in church like I did. And just took part in everything and everything. And was really not born again. And I had to go through an experience. To come to the realization that Jesus is real. I wouldn't want you to go through that. And Minister Sassu will tell you and I, he wouldn't want nobody to go through what he went through. To come to that place, to acknowledge that Jesus, I sense in my spirit, God is calling people here this morning to get up honestly. I am not so brave, neither stupid, to make such statements because I don't like fame and I don't like me. God is stuck in the hearts this morning. The choice is yours. He's still looking for room in the hearts of mankind. I want to tell you about Wally. Wally was a nine-year-old. Nine years, but it was a big nine year. It was around the Christmas time, and they were having pageant. Wally wanted to be a shepherd in the drama. But the teacher seen Wally's side say, Wally, I want you to play the role of the innkeeper. So in the narration, and Mary and Joseph from Nazareth into Bethlehem when looking for a room. And they reached the inn, and Joseph was knocking. Wally place was to come out big, nine-year-old and George. There's no room in the inn. Be gone. But Wally came out and said, there's no room in the inn. And he stopped there. He froze. When the audience looked at the nine-year-old, they saw tears streaming down his cheeks. Wally could not say, be gone. Somebody in the background, backstage said, Wally, say, be gone. And somewhere he mustered the courage and he said, be gone. Come, sister, come quick, come quick. Come. So Joseph put his arm around the shoulder of Mary, and they begin to walk. And I hear Wally, thank you, in the background. But you can have my room with tears rolling down his cheek. What this young nine-year-old went through 
in a drama, not the real thing. He's telling them he know that Mary is carrying Jesus from the drama. He had to say, there is no room in there and be gone. But something happened to Wally on the inside. He said, you can have my room and the audience, everybody. But that's not the play. I tell you, that's not the play. But something happened to Wally. I pray God in Jesus' name that something happened to everybody who's listening this morning. Amen. That we stop putting up Jesus. He wants to come in. He wants to use you and I. He wants a womb to stay in, to grow and mature and manifest to the world who he is. The person that portrayed the role of Jesus, he said, that's okay. We will go to the stable just to cover up the part. How many wallies do we have in this assembly this morning and online who will not say to Mary and to Joseph and Mary, be gone. There's no room in the inn. But would say, you could use my room. You could have my room. How many of us will say to Jesus, you can have my heart this morning. He's still looking for hearts. He's still looking for hearts. Had this innkeeper know that Mary was, I want you to think for a moment. Did the innkeeper, he, well, he was about the money. He was a busy business. He was in the business. He was looking to make all the money he could. So he was not paying attention to the young woman. How many of us here will truly see a woman in her ninth month laboring like that? Could barely walk and say, no, there's no room. None of us will. At least I would like to believe that. I would like to believe that. His priorities was in the wrong place. When we slander, I hear the brother and I say, wow. When we gossip, when we backbite, when we misunderstand, when we cause divisions, my good Lord, what are we doing? Are we closing the door shut and saying there is no room, Jesus? Are we? Are we doing that this morning? And I can go on and I don't want to list too many things here this morning. What about the manger? The manger was nothing like this. When we do drama now, we have this pretty polished thing. No, it wasn't like that. It was from the rock. And they would take the chisel and they will tune out a manger, a stinky something, a smelly something, nasty looking, dirty, right? But the manger was glorified because of the person who was leading it. You are getting that word this morning, right? Maybe you are saying, I am like the manger. I am stinky. I am smelly. I am nothing. I am. No, the manger had a place in this scene because they were donkeys. And when the people came and was housed in the inn, they need a place to put the animals. They needed to feed the animals. And the manger played an important role in housing the food for the animal. And if you have seen yourself, as a manger and you're saying I'm not worthy and I'm not good. None of us are good. The Bible tells us not one of us is righteous. No, not one. The righteousness that you and I have is because of Jesus Christ. And I keep saying that not one of us is better than anybody else. We all are in the same boat. We were all born in sin, shape and iniquity. David said, and we were born in sin. Romans tells us the wages of sin is said, but then before that he says, all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Everybody here this morning. The clothes we have on does not differ or distinguish you and I. We are saved by grace. We are who we are because of the grace of God. Our giftings doesn't make us any better than anybody else. I play the keyboard or the drums or the, or the guitar or whatever. Doesn't make me anybody better than, than anyone else. It does not. We are all on the same level because when God looks at us, brethren, he sees the blood of Jesus. That makes a difference. Never put yourself above anybody else. 
we are given the grace, the giftings is the grace of God given to us so we can help somebody else. If we say that we are like the manger, give it to Jesus. Our lives will change. Our priorities will change. Our family lives will change. Our environment will change. Our religion and practices will change. Our behavior will change. And our destiny will definitely change. Give yourself to Jesus. He came for this purpose. He was birthed in a manger to make you and I sons and daughters of the Most High God. But if we don't give ourselves to him, nothing will happen. I'll close it up here. They say the shepherds in the field were not the literal shepherds. Bethlehem was just about five miles from Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, there were the temples, the synagogues, the tabernacle, and what that. And all of these with the religious men of the day had no room for Jesus. When Jesus grew up and we, he had to go to their temple and beat them, you know that. They had no place. They don't want to hear him. It's the religious people that killed Jesus. It's the chief priest, the high priest. Paid people alive and said, Jesus did this and did that and did the other. Religion wouldn't help you this morning. Let me tell you something. Why I personally am happy to see everybody in here and here to be filled. All right? Come with the church, wouldn't help you. You need to have Jesus on the inside. Jesus needs to be dwelling on the inside. Baptism won't save nobody. Right? Baptism will take you down there, we dip you under the water and bring you up. That one is not the way to heaven. It's not the way to any life. Eternal life. Jesus, the seed, Jesus needs to be birthed in you. You need to be sure you are born again. So when the trumpet sound, we need not to be looking for signs. We need to be listening for the trumpet. Oh, the church don't look for signs. The church need to listen. And many of us in the churches are listening to a lot of stuff. No offense. And it's not a, a damning statement. But we find ourselves listening to so many people and believing so many people that we miss hearing the Spirit of God. It boils down to you and God. It boils down to me and God. You know, when the Bible says that Mary gave birth and she wrapped her baby in swaddling clothes, I, I, I thought I would have walked with some strips. It was strips of cloth. You see, the shepherds, they were priests who were looking after the sheep. But it was sacrificial lambs. They were looking or arraying lambs to sacrifice in the temple. So when the sheep would get birth, they would take strips of cloth and tie the legs of the lamb to keep it straight. Jesus didn't have no blanket like some of us. No brand name, nothing. Mary took the cloth that was in the stable and wrapped Jesus, strips of cloth. Today, Jesus is the king of all kings. Today, Jesus, right now, Jesus at the right hand of the Father. But Jesus come from humble beginnings. And maybe you are seeing yourself, I'm not in a class like them. Oh, we are not in their class. Don't let the enemy tie you up with that. You can rise above that. You can become the person God wants you to be. I am declaring to you, you can. In conclusion, the innkeeper, you know what happened to him? He missed. His story is a story of a missed opportunity. What about you this morning? Right there, close it, right there. Are you going to be like the innkeeper and miss this opportunity to house the king of kings? Are we going to miss this opportunity? Jesus in December 25th, 2023, now is about nine minutes to 10. He's still knocking at hearts. 
Will you open up your heart and say, Jesus coming? Revelation 3, 21 it is. 2021. Jesus, John writing. He said, Jesus, he said, Jesus, Jesus saying, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And in evangelism, when we're studying evangelism, they tell us that's a scripture when you go to the Hindu, to the Muslim, or to the unsaved man. But John was writing and Jesus was speaking about the church age we are living in. The Laodicean churches where Jesus said, you're neither hot nor cold. We did right there. We did with them. And you know, we did with them. They have church in there. Yeah, they are. well, I'm going today. I next week, I will go. What time is church in there? Now, that's too late. I go still. It have a good movie on TV. I don't know your business. I'm just speaking. And Jesus, he, I think every one of us drink tea at some point in time. Tea. And if the tea is lukewarm, it can't go down. And Jesus is saying to me and to you, not only to you, not only to me, but to all of us, you are like lukewarm tea. You're neither hot, you're neither cool. What are we doing? This year gone by, I didn't have the services of my brother here. I didn't have no help to go out in the street. I wanted to go in a village and blow it up for Jesus. But when I look around, who will help me transport the equipment? Who will help me set up? I'm speaking to you. All right. Who will help me if I have to get a tent? Thank God for Barry for the sport. Barry went all on his own. Get the tent, set it up. I say, Barry, how much you pay? Say, you don't worry, Pastor, don't worry about that. We need more like Barry in church. He got the Bible unmounted, took it back. I had nothing to do with that. And the time has come for you to help me. I'm not young anymore. We need the help. Somebody to help me organize a program. Somebody to help me. We need to reach the people outside there. While coming to church is good. And the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves in the house of God. It's a command. What is it? Thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not commit adultery. And no, that's a command too. Fail not to assemble in the house of God. Come together with a spirit of oneness and unity. When we do that and we begin to sing from here, the spirit and praise of God will fill us out and the fire of God. I want to see it. I want to see fire on top of my roof as long as we stay here. And when we move from here, I want fire. I am, I am not the one. I didn't born in the water. I born in fire. I like to see things fiery. And some of you can't understand me yet. Yo, I want things done at a certain manner. Professional. We can't be lackadaisical in the kingdom of God. Everything in the kingdom has been planned out. God is a God of order. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of design. Everything God has is well done. If we are following him, we can be puhar. And you know what puhar means? A lackadaisical. I also talk to somebody in the church, brother. I hear coming back. You can't, you can't correct people in church, you know. So then what is the church here for? If we can't talk to nobody, then let you, I, I, my own man, that, that was was here. I'm my own man. I walk in with my own money. I could, go ahead. But a day is coming. A day is coming. God puts a shepherd for a reason. And every assembly have one shepherd. It's only one. It's only one. Anything with two heads is a monster. And the time will come, I will gracefully leave this role and somebody else. And I can guarantee you this morning, and in Jesus' name also, you're going to find another one like this. I will look for you. I will call it till some of you get fed up on me. But that is me. You have to get more fed up on me still. Because that's the heart. The heart. I, I never tell nobody to bring 10,000. I didn't kick up and say, I want a pair of shoes or buy me a shirt. I never ask somebody. My job 
is to make all the necessary sacrifice to see you in the kingdom. That's my rule. And by God's grace, I'll say this this morning. My son and my wife cannot understand me. Pick up everything and give it away. That's me. If you don't have one, I know I will give you the last if I have. Because Jesus was the best that the Father had and he gave 